Hi friends! I am back with uh, my video to discuss my uh, trip to Kenya. Uh, first things first, I did not take this particular camera with me. Um, I just didn't want to be lugging a lot of things with me. So I just basically used my phone and I'm going to see if I can get the videos and pictures off of my phone and put some in here so you guys could see. Um, so the last video that I did, um, I gave you updates of things that have been going on this year. Um, let's see, this is the ninth month. Can you believe that? We're in the ninth month already. Um, it's been a very, very good year so far. It's been a very busy year too. Um, so I'll start out by saying that. And then before I talk about um, the trip and upcoming trips, um, I want to share this because I've had a lot of um, folks leave me comments and over on Instagram or send me messages or send comments here on other YouTube videos um, talking about my fall decorating and you can't wait to see what I'm doing for the fall and people that are already gearing up for Christmas and those sorts of things. So let me just start out by saying this. Um, we've done a lot of downsizing at our house and again I think I shared last video that with Harry now being retired um, you know we don't know if we're going to downsize you know if we're going to move and so that's kind of up in the air right now um, one thing is uh, whether we stay here or we move I just needed to downsize. I had a whole bunch of stuff, especially holiday stuff. And in past videos, I've taken you to my storage room. I've taken you out to my shed. Um, when I decorate at Christmas, you see all the crates that I would have to bring in my house and things that bring upstairs. Because it has been, uh, let's see, Harry and I will be married tomorrow. It'll be 35 years. So 35 years of stuff. <laughs> um, in January, I had some uh, junk people. They come where they clear out your house, they clear out your basement. I had them here in January. I think I mentioned that in the last video. I had them again in April, and then I had them a third time in July. And this time in July, we went out to the two sheds. And as far as um, my decorations go, I, I got rid of a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, it was amazing, all of that that I had, really. <laughs> so, as far as fall decorating goes, usually by, like, the second, third week of August, I'm already decorating for fall. This year, I didn't do so because we went to Kenya in August, and I usually start my fall cleaning in August before, like, I do all my decorating. Well, I knew I wasn't going to be decorating, but I still had to do my fall cleaning, and then we left for Kenya, and now we've been home, was it two weeks, and we have one more week before we leave again, we're going to Florida. Now, Harry's not going to go uh, to Florida. Um, he's going to stay home with the dogs. We put our dogs in the kennel for the first time ever, because usually whenever we've taken trips, somebody's been here at the house to keep them, usually a family member or a family friend. Um, this time, uh, since we all went to Kenya, and I didn't want to try to find people and put people out or whatever, so... Um, we decided let's put the dogs in a kennel because you can put all three of them together. Well, it doesn't matter that all three of them were together. Um, 
they didn't do so well. Ellie did the best out of all of them. Chloe was so-so. But Lacey, she has Addison's disease, as you guys, especially the long-timers, you know she's got Addison's. And um, what that is, uh, the body, it, it happens even in some humans, too. It's not just a, a dog or an animal thing. It's a people thing, too. There's a hormone that our body um, releases when we get panicked or if we get stressed about something and it helps our body and our organs not to you know either get out of whack or to fail or whatever it, it keeps us uh, healthy and and it keeps us um, just alive and strong you know um, so when people have Addison's they don't have that hormone or they don't have a lot of it. That's why Lacey has to go once a month for that shot, um, her Percortin, and that's what that is. It's injecting that hormone in there. And she had had the shot, <clears throat> I think, like two weeks before we left. All her medicines, her steroids, that was all sent. The kennel guy, Bob, was, you know, giving her her medicine. Mm -mm. The detachment between the family, her environment, and her being in that kennel was really bad. Um, he even had to, the kennel guy, Bob, he even had to call the vet, put her on some medication, and she really wasn't doing so well by the time that we got back. We were gone for eight days. Um, if we would have been gone for like another week, uh, it would have been disastrous probably. Um, so anyway, as soon as we came home, uh, we took her to the vet the next day and the main thing was that she was dehydrated and even though uh, Bob said all of the dogs were drinking a lot um, even though she was drinking she still got dehydrated and I don't know if it was because of the stress or whatever and that was the main issue that was going on with her and you know you can't your body we can't be dehydrated so that's why I said if we would have been gone even another week it would have been really bad. So, um, the vet put her on an antibiotic and I think put her on some other medication and she's taken all that now. She's doing a whole lot better. Um, the dogs all lost a little bit of weight in that eight days that we were gone and Lacey lost eight pounds. She lost a pound a day. So, um, when we came back, I started like giving her gobs of more food, like at two o'clock when I give them their chicken and veggies and things like that. I was giving her more when I'd send the other two dogs outside to go play and whatever. I would um, give Lacey some extra food <laughs> and she's starting to put the weight back on. When I give them cookies and things like that when they come in the house, like the other ones each get one. And Lacey, I've been trying to sneak her too, you know. So she's doing better but um harry said that's it he said they're not going back to the kennel and my mom originally was going to come here and stay with them when we went to florida but um when i made that arrangement back with my mom back in april when we were planning this trip to florida I got really concerned. I was even telling Carly, I don't know about having Grandma come here because my mom's 77. She's 77 now. She's already had um, surgery on both of her hips. And um, I, I'm getting nervous if, like, she fell or something. Um, especially because our cat binks. You know, cats weave in and out of your legs anyway. And Binks is uh, 17 years old now, and he's become either senile or just a really needy cat. Um, but he's constantly wanting attention, constantly meowing, and he goes in between the legs a lot and everything, um, even as we're trying to walk. And I started thinking, I told Carly, I said, I don't know if that's going to be good <laughs> for your grandmother to be here, and, and what if she fell or something? Because I was even thinking if she did come here, I was going to have to get my next door neighbor to come over here every day to check on her. But I don't know. Now with the whole kennel situation, Harry just decided it's best if um, he just he's going to stay here. So 
So now let's go back. I said all of that to say why I have chosen not to do fall decorating this year. And the reason why is because I did my fall cleaning. We went to Kenya. We were coming back. I knew that I was going to only be here for a few weeks and then we'd be gone for another week. And then by the time we come back home, it's pushed in like the end of September. And usually at the end of October is when I'm um, putting out Christmas decorations. And so I just thought life is just kind of just busy since August till now. And even when we come back from Florida, it's going to be busy, kind of intense busy. So I thought, well, there's no reason to put out my fall decorations this year. So I didn't do anything. I didn't even put branches of leaves and that sort of thing in a vase. I, I did nothing for our fall decorating this year. Um, and now as far as Christmas decorating goes, I got rid of a lot of my Christmas stuff because I just had way too much. Now I will decorate for Christmas, but I'm going to say this. Last year, I told everybody that I was going to downscale on my Christmas decorating, which I did. I mean, I had decorations out. I just didn't have it like overkill like I always do. Um, all the rooms everywhere, all over the place, above my door and all that. I didn't do that. Um, I really downscaled it. I think I only put up two big trees last year. I put my dining room tree and my foyer tree. And then I had um, that little tree in Alex's room, a little one, a four-footer um, in the family room and one in the hallway. Um, and I think I put the little tree in my bathroom. And then, like, I had my lighted garlands, that sort of thing. The garland that I put on my staircase, I didn't even do that last year. I'm thinking this year, though, I may go ahead and put that garland up because uh, in my foyer, I don't think I'm going to do a foyer tree this year. Um, I will do my dining room tree. That's very traditional for me. Um, when we lived in Chicago is when I started doing a lot of the Christmas trees. And that one tree I got and I put in my dining room. And I always wanted to have a tree in my dining room. My grandmother had a tree in um, her dining room. And I always liked it going for Thanksgiving and Christmas. And it was just lit up with the tree and everything. So for memory's sake and just because it's kind of become like a tradition that I've done um, for, let me see, I don't know. I want to say 21, 22 years now, I've had it in my dining room, so I'm just going to keep that one there. And I like it because I see it when I'm in the kitchen. I'm doing my cooking, like daily cooking dinner when I'm making Christmas cookies and everything. The way that I'm at my island, I face into my dining room. It's right there in the corner, and I see it. So um, it cheers me up, and it just helps me with the holidays especially holiday baking and that sort of thing so um, I'm gonna definitely do that tree no foyer tree no living room tree no big tree in the family room I didn't do that last year either I'm still gonna put the smaller tree in the living room and the small tree that I used to put in the hallway I don't even know if I'm doing that I'm really scaling back um, I'm gonna put my two little ceramic trees that I have and so why am I even scaling back on all my Christmas? Well, number one, because I got rid of a lot of Christmas stuff. But the Christmas things that I did keep, um, we're going back to Kenya, Carly and I. And we're going with another friend. And hopefully, now this is tentatively plans in the making. Nothing set in stone yet. But it's our plan that the three of us want to go for three weeks so whether we go like the last two weeks of December the first week of January or the last three weeks of December and come home like after New Year's I don't know exactly how that's gonna work just yet but that's our plan um, we want to visit um, three of the major cities there in Kenya and my friend has friends that live in Eldoret we have a friend that lives in Kasumu, and then um, we'll head probably back to Nairobi because 
we flew into Nairobi and that's what we'll do probably this time and then leave out of there. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the plan for now, but I'm not sure what we'll do, uh, on that. Um, I'll keep everybody updated and will I take my bigger camera this time? I don't know. I'll have to see. But anyway, so because we're going to be gone or I'm going to be gone anyway, most of December, um, you know, there's no point in me doing all that decorating. Um, really the decorating when I do it, I pretty basically do it because I like it. And I want my family to enjoy it. But if I left it to the men in my family to decorate, they would put up a tree and maybe they wouldn't even put up a tree. They'll just pull out the ceramic trees that like, they don't care about all the decorating. You know what I mean? So, and if I'm gone, Carly and I, for most of December, it's just the guys that are here. So, um, they, they really don't need all the decorations, you know? So, and then that way, when I come back from Kenya, that's another thing. I don't have to now be concerned with, uh, now I got to put all this stuff away because the holidays are over. So, yeah, I'm just really scaling back even more this year than I did last year. Okay, so um, I guess what I'll talk a little bit about now, um, again, if I can get footage from my trip of Kenya, I'll, I'll put it here so everybody can see. Um, what I want to say about Kenya is this. You know, they're like a third world country. It's a very poor country. Now, Nairobi is like the biggest city. It's more modern. But even there with it being modern and everything, you still see people how poor they really are. And when we were traveling from Nairobi to Nakuru, alongside of the roads, you know, here we have plazas everything's concrete you know there's plazas and stores and there's you know big paved parking lots and all of this sort of thing no you go along the sides of the roads there in kenya it's all dirt some of it uh you will see it'll get grassy like grassy knoll areas but um their stores are like um shanties like what we call in america shanties or shack they're just small little put together buildings. Um, one you can go into and buy some grocery things. Uh, you can go into another one and if you need a cell phone or cell phone parts, you could go there. Um, you could go into another one where they'll sell like hardware, things like that. It's, it's all very, it's, they're just very poor there. You know something, I've always been um, very appreciative for what I have. I try uh, to never boast about what I have. I just try to be very humble because I'm always aware that there's people um, in America, but even around the world, that they're less fortunate than even what I have. But even being humble about everything when you go to Kenya or any other country that's very poor, I'll tell you what, it humbles you even more. To see that people, what they do without. And then here in the Western nations, you know, there's complaining if, you know, this and that. We're not getting this or if things aren't happening quick enough, you know, people get upset and get angry and complain and everything and then you go over to these other countries like that and you just see how the people are living and they are living but they're just they're just so poor you know it really it really stops to make you think about not just what you have but even your country that you live in and the things that we always take for granted to not take things for granted anymore I'll just give you an example, even. Um, the one resort hotel that we stayed at in Nairobi, um, 
it was on a downscale compared to hotel rooms here, like at the Hilton or whatever. Um, but it was more upscale compared then to the hotel room that we were in when we went to Nakuru. Um, like, you know, in hotels, there's like a lounge or like a little restaurant you could go into. You could call and order room service. There's none of that. Um, when we were in Nairobi, uh, they gave us towels, one towel each, one washcloth each. And um, I think that they had soap there and a couple other toiletries, just like a couple things. I don't like body wash. I don't even know if they have body wash. I think they just had soap. That was it. And then when we went to Nakuru, you got one towel each. And sometimes they didn't even put a towel out for you. You had to call and ask for a towel. And then they'd bring it to you. Um, you got two little bars of soap. About two inches high and about an inch wide. I'm not kidding. They were teeny tiny little bars of soap. And you got two. That was it. You know, you go to hotels here in America or even other Western nations, you get a big bar of soap, you get shampoo, hair conditioner, body wash, toothbrush, toothpaste, you know, you get an iron in your room to iron your clothes, you get a hair dryer, you get none of that. None of that. I mean, basically, when you go to stay in these rooms, it's just a room. Basically. Um, our television... And we had, oh, in Nairobi, we had like an old school, little boxy, portable, boxy television. That's how old it was. And we didn't even turn it on. But <laughs> when we went to um, Nakuru, we had um, one of those mounted on the wall televisions. It was kind of small, but it was mounted on the wall. But you got... Um, BBC and you got um, the British version of CNN and I think you got like a local channel that was all <laughs> that was it um, and it was just very different uh, the people there I love the people people are, are very friendly very kind um, it's just you know seeing how they live compared to how we live and it, like I say, you come back home and you're just so much more appreciative, you know, of, for what you have. Um, it's just very humbling. So um, there's that. Um, as far as um, seeing animals, I wanted to take a safari, but I know I'm going to be going back um, in December. But probably I'll make, I might make more trips there. I don't, I'm not sure. But... Um, the thing is, I had mentioned to, to someone while we were there, I said, yeah, I was hoping maybe, you know, sometime come here, I want to go on a safari because I, I love all the wildlife and all nature sort of things. And whenever I'm traveling, I like looking at the different plants and the different trees that are growing in that climate and area that you don't get where you live and the different um, animals and things that are there. <laughs> this one lady, she goes, you don't need to take a safari here. She says, when we go on the drive to Nakuru, there'll be plenty of wildlife on the sides of the road. And so we did see some. We saw zebras. I mean, the zebras are just out grazing there. They kind, kind of come close to the road. The baboons sit right along the side of the roads there. Um, another thing that's humbling, too, is... Uh, like here, when we build roads and we build buildings, you know, we got all this heavy machinery and equipment and we can get it done kind of quickly and there's not so much manpower because the machinery is doing the work and everything. But there in Kenya, mm, no. You might see like a bobcat thing. Uh, one apartment high-rise building they were building by the resort where we were staying in Nairobi, they had a crane outside, but like, that's it, you know? Everything else is done like manual labor, basically. Even fixing the roads. I mean, the road crews were out there with their shovels and they're digging and they're doing stuff. They didn't have all the equipment like what we have 
you know, here. So that's why I say it's really humbling. But another thing is, like, um, here, like in America, you go driving down the highway. Uh, if they're cutting the grass, you know, that grows along the road, they got the machinery thing that comes the mower, and it mows all of it down. Now, you know what they have in Kenya, that um, how they take care of their grass along the side of the road? All along the sides of the road, there's shepherd boys, and they're moving around their sheep and their goats and their cows. They have them along the side of the road grazing and eating all of the grass. That's how they keep the grass uh, from getting high is, is because of the animals. So that's like really old school, you know. Um, and the animals, they don't get hit by cars or anything. Of course, they're used to that. You know, they're used to every day being out there along the sides of the road. So that's why I say it. it's very humbling uh, going there. Um, so, but we had a great time. As a matter of fact, after the first week of being home, I said to Carly, this was last week, I said, I don't know about you, but today, seriously, if I could just pack my suitcase and go and get back on a plane and go back to Kenya, I would go. I really, really had the time of my life and what an experience being there. And as a matter of fact, we're planning on going in December and it's like December can't get here fast enough, you know. That's why I don't care about all the decorating and everything. Um, okay, so there's that with Kenya. Um, let me talk about flying there. So we, when we went to Kenya, we decided to fly British Airways. And I just got to say here, like I give like high fives to all of those uh, British Airway crew people there in the planes and everything. And really even that whole airline. British Airways is the best. They are really, really a good airline to fly with. As a matter of fact, when I was leaving um, the first plane, no, not the first plane. The first plane was from Philadelphia to London and then from London to Kenya. When I was getting off in Kenya, that second crew of people, I told them I, I, how much I loved their airline. I so appreciated their kindness and all that they did for us. And I even told them that they were better than American Airlines. Because <laughs> um, sometimes American Airlines, I don't know, even just going like two and a half hours to Florida, sometimes the crew people just really, I don't know. I think that we could have better crew people on our planes, at least on that airline, you know. That's the one that I fly the most, um, is American. But British Airways, they were great. And I'm going to tell you something. These people are coming to your seat, like, about, like, every hour to two hours, you know. Would you like something to drink? Would you like some tea? Coming and bringing you snacks. Then they come and they bring you meals. We'd get two big meals going there and then when we were leaving London to go to Kenya we got two more big meals but in the meantime they're bringing snacks to you they're bringing you all these drinks and um, they, they just like totally pampered you it, they're great and the one thing is about um, British Airways that um, instead of having all the cabin people you know now they, they did have the camp uh, the cabin people point or the stewards I should say you know pointing to your exits and um, when the mask things you know they have to instruct with that but like the rest of it they got um, like the little um, television video monitor thing that you have there at your seat so you can watch movies and play games and that um, they have um, a whole flight presentation which is pretty awesome and I found it. It's actually on YouTube, and I will try to remember to put the link in the show more. Um, I actually got a kick out of watching that every time that we were taken off. It was pretty good. So anyway, <clears throat> love British Airways. When we go back in December, I told Carly, I said, I would actually like to fly British Airways again, but I don't know. I, will, I think I might want to try Lufthansa because um, Lufthansa... It's a German airline, but when they take you to Kenya, they fly into France. So I'm assuming they take you to Paris. And then from Paris, then you go to um, 
to Kenya. And just for the experience, I mean, yeah, you're still in the airport, but um, if the Paris airport is anything like Heathrow, I would like to see what it's like because Heathrow Airport is almost like a little city in there. Um, it, they got all of this shopping. They got like ritzy ditzy shopping like Dior, Chanel, um, Swiss watches, Rolex, they, stores that just have all of this stuff, you know, just just all kinds of merchandise to buy, whether you want to buy clothes or jewelry or just groceries or whatever. And one thing is, they had Harrods there. Um, they had like two Harrods stores that I saw. So um, I went in there and I got Alex, I didn't bring it down with me, but I brought him back um, one of the metal uh, double-decker buses. And then I got this other little thing that has the red uh, mailbox with the red phone booth in it. And so I brought that back from, for him. And I always get the Twinings, um, English afternoon and English breakfast teas. But this is uh, Harrods. So I decided I would try this. And this is actually really good. And, I mean, you won't be able to see it in here. And plus, the lighting is okay down here, but it's not so great. But um, the tea, I don't know. We'll, we'll see if you can see. I don't know. The tea is like um, a reddish color, and it tastes really good. Now, when I first walked into Harrods, besides seeing tea everywhere, I saw a Christmas pudding. So I bought this uh, just to see what it's like, and this was, it was eight pounds. How much was this tea? This tea was nine pounds. Um, what does this say here? Oh, let me, so I'll read you about this tea, this particular one. It says, the island of, is it Ceylon or Ceylon, is now known as Sri Lanka, but this tea still bears its colonial name. Picked in the prime months of August and February, the blend combines high and medium elevation teas from the pristine Dimbula region. Uh, the carefully picked leaves yield an amber brew full of sweet, subtle flavors. And I'm telling you, it is so good. Uh, when I run out of this, I'm going to have to go on Amazon and see if I can buy more of it. So, when I saw that tea, right next to it, I saw this. I'll give this a chance to focus, if you can read that. It's called Boston Tea Party. And it's from the East India Company of London. And this one says, um, In 1773, American colonists stole aboard ships and dumped 342 crates of East India Company tea into Boston Harbor to protest taxation. So we learned that in history. The act became a rallying point for what would become the war for American independence, changing the course of history. Today, our Boston Tea Party blend, based on the original Singlo Imperial and Bobea tea sent by the East Indian Company to America, allows you to enjoy fine tea free of any taxing troubles. <laughs> Which I thought it was funny when I read that. So anyway, I, I couldn't wait to get home and try this and Josiah, because he likes tea too, but he's all into history and everything. So we finally had some of this. And this tea is not tea bags. It's the loose tea. And so I brewed some of it for us. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Now, Carly had um, some of it, and she said she liked it. She said it's kind of got like a sweet taste to it. I was like, what? Um, Josiah said he liked it, and he was describing the way that he... He was enjoying it. I don't know if this is kind of like this tea's almost like a mood ring. You know how like your mood ring changes colors according to your mood? I don't know. Because this tea, the way that Carly tasted it was different from the way that Josiah tasted it. And both of them was different from the way that I tasted it. Because when I was drinking it, I'm very serious. It tasted like 
um, like it was steeped with mushrooms or something. It had like a it had like a funky taste to it. I didn't like it. So I I don't know. I could see why they threw this in the harbor too. Not just to protest um, taxation, but I didn't like this. Um, this one, yeah, I really like this one. This one's really good. This is actually better than Twinings, by the way. Um, so I did like that. And I did get something else. Another tea. I got this, uh, Caricho Gold. It's a Kenyan tea. And, you know, because the English, you know, colonized in through, um, Kenya and that sort of thing. And ruled over them for a while. Um, anyway, this tea also has, like, that amber color like that reddish amber color and the tea is really good and quite honestly if I had to choose between these two teas this one this Caricho gold is really really good as a matter of fact I have one bag that I'm still working on there's a bunch of tea bags in there um, I'm working on the one bag still on, and I'm drinking this like every day a couple times a day um, so I'm still working on one bag and I have three more in this box but I know I'm going to be running out at some point so I ordered another one off of Amazon so it's really good so um, that's all I brought back I didn't want to be buying like a whole bunch of uh, souvenirs and bringing things back and all of that sort of thing because like I said I just had you know some people here at my house three different times this year to start you know depleting things in my house so um, yeah I wasn't going to be bringing a bunch of stuff back but I did bring back a bunch of different Cadbury's chocolate bars that you can't find here. Um, and this one, uh, when I go back, I am going to definitely get it, Unless I can look on Amazon and see if they have it. It's like the Cadbury's milk chocolate at the bottom. Then the middle part is their white chocolate. And then on top of it, they have the dark chocolate. Oh, that is so good. It is so, so good. And... Um, Man, I ate that up. I'll have to get more. Um, so, uh, they also have Cadbury's, not just in England, but they have them over in Kenya, too. Um, because, you know, they colonized over there. The English did. So, um, anyway, this video is very long, but you wanted an update and wanted to know what's going on and that sort of thing. So, um, that is um, this video. And, um... I will see you again and very soon. Till then, you guys take care.